Hey guys, I wanted to make a really quick video today, kind of going over something that I have been doing more of my own training um, that's really helped me out with my mindset around different levels of relative intensity. So first off, when we define relative intensity, what I mean by that is essentially how hard that you are pushing relative to your absolute abilities. So say you're doing, you know, say your 10 rep max is on squat is 315 pounds. Well, so your 100% relative abilities or relative intensity is going to be 315 for sets of 10. Uh, that's what we're basically mean with like, you know, relative intensity. It's basically relative to your maximum capacity to perform a certain sport specific task. So basically circling back to where I was first going is how do I like reframe the sort of lighter based work that's not as heavy or hard or like high on the relative intensity scale. Um, because I think something that lots of powerlifters in particular struggle with is we got into the sport to lift heavy shit, to really grind through weights and like that feeling of lifting a heavy barbell and like almost dying on a one rep max, you know, out of powerlifting me on a third attempt, but we get it and we get that PR and it's like, it's the greatest feeling ever. Um, the reality is that with the research is pretty clear that if you are going for the majority of your training with relative intensities that are approaching RP 9, 10, so basically, you know, you could have only done one more rep or zero reps in the tank, um, the fatigue trade-offs are pretty big. Um, and the way that you want to conceptualize training is we want to get the most amount of training stimulus that we can recover from. Um, while minimizing the fatigue that is incurred with that. Because when we train, we get something called fitness, which is going to, to, to be our ability to get bigger, to get stronger, the adaptations that we are seeking. However, there is a side effect or a cost of doing business, which would be the overall um, fatigue that comes along with that. And so we want to be able to manage that. And most of the time, that means that the majority of your volume work is probably going to be best done in the RP, you know, five to eight range for the majority of your sessions, probably between the RP, you know, mostly between the 70 to 80% uh, of your one rep max is usually is what most of the research is kind of showing. For those of you guys who are, want a little bit more in, you know, insight on this, check out the data, the data driven strength guys. They're doing a lot more research on this as well as, um, you know, my podcast with Jordan from Marvel Medicine, Jordan Feigenbaum, and my podcast with the data driven strength guys where you kind of talk about, you know, like, the utility of using more of a lower fatigue training approach as opposed to a high fatigue, high effort. Because while that approach is a ton of stimulus, it's really only going to help you out in like say a peaking phase where that is going to be more of the emphasis is that top end intensity. However, the volume is lower in a peaking phase because you kind of need to detrain a little bit in order to peak that strength. It's like when peaking beta, you're not really actually gaining much strength. You're just expressing the strength that you have built up to that point with the volume. So circling back, most of your training is going to be relatively easy. Um, you know, RP five to eight is that's definitely still a challenge. You're going to feel on the on, on, your, on your back, but it's not going to be like you're grinding through every single set. Um, what I've kind of done is when I have a lighter RP, say I'm doing RP six on bench press. Um, instead of being like, oh man, that's really, really light, blah, 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 I kind of, I'm like, okay, I'm going to reframe this as, I'm going to move the barbell as fast as I possibly can with a maximum intent. Um, there's a big part about strength, which has to do with, you know, um, you know, with force production, which is going to be mass times acceleration. So if, you know, we want to produce more force, if we can accelerate a little bit faster, um, then we're going to be able to be able to have lots of really, really great reps that are going to be effective towards strength. As long as you're above that 70% mark of absolute intensity, um, we are going to see basically the similar strength gains. Um, so when you do have an RPE six on your program, instead of, you know, thinking, oh man, like I'm going to sandbag this, don't really have to like put that much like intent behind it. Like, and instead of that, because it's real quote unquote easier, put more of your efforts from you know, grinding through the reps and really like, you know, being in a big psychologically aroused state, which incurs more fatigue to just being like, I'm going to focus on moving the barbell with as much intent as I possibly can with flawless technique, with maximum uh, velocity that I can do. 
Um, and what that happens I mean, is just what I've found in my own training and with my own clients that approach their training like this is that when you move on into that heavier intensity, say you're doing a heavy single, double, or tri triple, you know, when we're in a peaking phase or, you know, what comes time, you know, it's more of an intensity phase as opposed to a volume phase. Um, those singles, doubles, and triples, you're used to moving with maximum intent and you have a little more meaning behind your reps. And usually what's going to happen is you've had a lot of really good skill practice with lighter loads because you're going to be able to, you know, have less chance of form breakdown. Um, two, you're going to be able to, I guess, have, again, be something that lots of people, like while you are going to have to have more grindy reps, have more low velocity reps, the closer that you approach failures because of the force velocity curve, essentially the more higher amounts of force that you have, you have to produce relative to your maximum capabilities, your force, I mean, the, the velocity is going to decline. Um, while that is true, you, you're, it's like, it's not moving slowly because you're trying to move it slowly. It's moving slowly because it's just heavy shit. But if you're moving it, if you have that intent uh, in training still, that still applies to lighter RPE work. You're going to be able to still have that intent of moving as fast as possible with a similar technique, except it's a little bit lighter. So um, I think sometimes as, and usually if you're, if you're in, you know, again, Sometimes it's kind of difficult to get out of that mindset. Like I want to grind, you know, work hard, sacrifice to, to win, you know, train harder than last time. Um, it's important to be able to push yourself and be able to, and it's a very, very essential for the skill of powerlifting to be able to grind out an RP nine or 10 single. That is the sport. Um, but the majority of your training and your improvement should be done within that volume of, uh, you know, 70 to 80, you know, 80, 85, 5% of your, of your one rep max at RPE like five to eight. That's going to probably be where most of the meat and potatoes of your progress is. And you need to learn how to love it there and learn how to, you know, approach that. Um, because it's going to be the best long-term progress. And having more of a focus on moving fast is, you know, and seeing, you know, it's going to help with more adaptations. Because um, if, if somebody, for, for the reason why this is so important is because Usually, I haven't had any, cl any clients in my own practical experience where I think, man, like they just need more intensity. The reason why they're not getting stronger is because they're not pushing hard enough. Like that's usually never the case. Usually, it's, you know, that might actually be the reason why they're they're, they're stalling, um, or you know, you know, because their their fatigue management just sucks. They're just super tired all all, all the time. They're getting hurt more often, um, whatever. Um, usually, I find it's how do we manage fatigue so that they can get enough volume to get the adaptations that we want in the long term because think about volume as the magnitude of stimulus that we we, we, we are getting and the more volume that we, we, can, we can have that we can recover from is going to lead to more uh you know more gains and so choosing how we we balance that you know balancing act between the fatigue incurred and the stimulus and you know it's going to have to do with basically how much are we prioritizing you know the lower rpe work versus the high intensity work uh, relative to our maximum capabilities and periodizing our efforts and you know in, in a volume block you know you're having lots of sets that are more submaximal not pushing top end intensity at as hard maybe not even touching that you know say if you're in post meet scenario like myself right now where I'm really not touching like very heavy weights um, just because it makes sense in this case in you know, my circumstances um, focus on moving with maximum intent focus on mo moving fast. A focus on making every single set quality. Take pride in the fact that it feels easier and that you're in, take knowledge in the fact that this is actually going to lead to better long-term results. Um, and then once you move into the higher intensity work, still have that same intent and effort behind it, but you're gonna just be stronger in the long run. Um, but probably don't put most of your emphasis on that top set. Uh, the top set that I like to, how I like to frame top sets, for example, say I have a single at one, uh, it was like a single at, at eight, you know, and then I have, you know, back down sets of five, like four by five by five, uh, and it's a percentage back down. Think of having, which is usually how I do per program. Um, think about having your top set set up those down sets. That's so you don't overshoot. Uh, you stay within your abilities. Um, but yeah, just some thoughts on how to approach your lower RPE work from a more, more of a mental standpoint, it's going to make it more exciting and more enjoyable. Um, you know, if you're just like, oh, this is easy and like, it's like light, like whatever, like, who cares? Like be like, get excited that, like, hey, you know, it's a chance for me to like move faster. I'm, you know, I'm in, understand this is 
part probably going to lead to better progress than if you're just coming to the gym every single set is grindy rp 9 10 uh you're going to get better strength progress manage your acute your acute fatigue a little bit better uh make better long-term training adaptations um and be overall become stronger with your singles and your top end work once it becomes time time to push um so yeah hopefully you guys like this video i just wanted to make you know this because it's been something that's been on my mind um you know just realize that there are certain things you have to do for progress and once you kind of buy into the process and you you know try this approach if you haven't done it like try you know maybe have most of your volume work within you know the rp5 to 8 rep range and you know see what happens um but anyways if you guys would like this video please make sure you that you like it if you guys like let me know what else like what other content you want to see i haven't really done a sit down formal talk video like this in a while so i want to just have one of these um but yeah let me guys know like what sort of content what sort of content you'd like to see uh down in the comment, comments below if you guys are interested in coaching or custom programming um please contact me on instagram or just shoot me uh or apply for coaching down below and uh yeah i'll talk to you guys later and uh you know till the ne next one peace